What up, players? So, uh, yeah, let's get started. Let's finish up our infantry. First thing, once your washes have dried, is you are going to go back onto the coats with Mephiston Red. So what we're going to do with this is we're just going to be painting um, over the highest areas, bringing that, that bright red quality to it, but we still want it to have a little bit of the darker redness in the recesses, if that makes sense. We're kind of just trying to take off the shine and bring the reds back up. So here I'm painting like the side of the shoulder, the like where his tricep would be, down here to the back. Anywhere where the where the cloth folds would be good. And on the bottoms. So, yeah, like right here on the front, the fold. Here in the back, if you see any areas like this where the coat kind of folds naturally, you kind of want to just leave that fold in the shadows. Or like here where there's a rip in the cloth. Highlight around the cloth, but uh, leave a little bit of that darker shaded area underneath. This part is gonna not last too long, not take you too long. You should be able to get through it relatively quickly. Just bringing Bringing that red back. Oh yeah, so I'm getting a lot of great... We're getting lots of uh, great views and and feedback on the Project Apocagast video that I put up, the, well the, I guess the, the teaser video. I was trying to do it from my phone, but my phone doesn't have video manager very well on it. So for YouTube, so I copied War Painter's video, the link to his video, and I was trying to um, paste it into the video description. And if you've seen until up until a couple minutes ago, there was no there was no link. So for anybody who's who hasn't heard or seen this, uh, a fellow YouTuber of mine. War, to, War Painter on YouTube has decided to um, challenge me to an August Apocalypse Super Heavy painting competition. And uh, I guess we're going to call it the August Apocalypse Painting Competition. And I thought that was just too much of a mouthful, so being a big fan of wordplay and puns, I decided to start calling it. Apoc August, and I I bought the new uh, Bane Blade, and well not the new Bane Blade, but the new packaged Bane Blade. So what I'm gonna do is oh I have to serve him sepia. That knife holster. What we're gonna do is starting August first, with everything still in the box on the sprue, we are going to build up and paint a. Uh, he's, got, he's got a Stampa, and I have a the Bane Blade. So I'm going to paint it up. I'm going to paint it up as a Vastroyan theme. I think I mentioned that I really am looking at the Stormlord, but really I could go for for anything. I could go for the Bane Blade. I could go for... I could paint up anything. So um, I'm not going to talk any more about that because when you are watching this video, it might be after August. So Apoc August might have already come and gone. In which case, all of this would be irrelevant. 
You know, it wouldn't be irrelevant though. Green eye. I always like this model because um, he's he's the he's like the young the young guy of the group. He doesn't he hasn't grown his mustache yet. One of the other awesome things I love about Vastroya is their they have I think one of the best, most intricate background themes out of Games Workshop's Imperial Guards regiments. They say that they are, um, like a lot of the, the soldiers have very close familial ties because um, you might find, because Vastroyans, they constantly resupply and re, uh, they send troops to I'm sorry, I'm saying uh, a lot. I'm not really thinking about what I'm saying. It's early in the morning for me. They resupply their their regiments with fresh troops from Vastroya. So they are one of the few Imperial Guards regiments that are almost always at fighting for fighting fighting strength. A lot of other regiments, like the Cadians or the Catechins, if they're in a far out, far flung galaxy, they will uh, take casualties and not be at full fighting strength but Vastroya because of their their firstborn pledge instead of just taking whoever musters into or gets drafted into the Imperial Guard they are always getting resupplied by fresh troops I guess because everybody on Vastroya is always cold so they have nothing to do but stay inside and and get cozy with each other So, because all the families have to supply their firstborn all the time, and Vastroy is this huge manufactorum factory world, Vastroyan troops are always, yeah, like I said, at, at full, full fighting force. And none of the other Imperial Guard regiments really had anything like that in their background before. Even the, the Cadians, who are like the Ultramarines of the Imperial Guard, they are the the go-to, the ones that Games Workshop is trying to sell the most. They, they don't have things like that. They don't have things like uh, the, the Vastroyans are. They have very close ties to the Mechanicum, the Adeptus Mechanicum, who makes all the robots. I don't say robots. There's no robots who make except Necrons who make all the tanks, artillery, yada yada yada, all of the mechanical equipment. They have very close ties to them, which is why their great coats are red, which is why a lot of them have very detailed and, and intricate bionics and enhancements. So very interesting background. They even have, I believe they even have very specific fluff for their knives, these super long, these long knives that they have, there's apparently, they don't, it's not just like a grenade or a, a piece of equipment, there is a very Russian sounding name to their, to their knife that they use for their bayonets and it's, it seems like it almost has like a ritualistic cultural significance to to each soldier. I like that idea and I'm working it into my fluff that these guys, my unit has fought long enough that some of them are uncles to the, the younger guys. In fact, this unit has the fluff that I'm kind of coming up with right now that they are, that they've been fighting for, for so long Constantly getting re. I just say resupplied for want of a better word right now. They're constantly getting resupplied with, with fresh troops from, from Vastroya. Uh, if you have weird watermarks like this, the wash is dried. Then I usually just find that the best way to get past it is just kind of get it into a crease like that, instead of showing the full watermark kind of paint around it and paint into it so that it kind of paints into a crease. 
And what that does is it creates like a false shadow, but it doesn't look like a nasty, soupy watermark that just dried on your model. I hate those. Anyway, back to the fluff for my Vostroyans. You can say that some guys in your regiment are the uncles or nephews of the older guys because they've been fighting so long. Another great thing is that all the firstborn get taken. There is no exception. So whether you are in the ruling tetriarchs or the lowliest common factory working family, you get pulled into the firstborn. So there's a very there's a very cultural honor tradition kind of feel to all the to to their history. And I'm I'm gonna try to work that into the fluff and say that maybe one of the uh, even though the, the ruling Tetriarch classes usually get pulled into the officer core, I'm gonna say that some of the maybe some of the the officers who who when they were on Vostroya growing up as children, they knew they were going to be in the Imperial Guard, they knew that they were going to get sent into the Vostroyan Firstborn. I'm going to say that one interesting thing about the, it in the fluff is that maybe one of the sergeants or one of the lieutenants belonged to this very rich ruling family and was very looked down upon the, the lower classes a lot. And now that he's in the Imperial Guard and they've saved his life so many times, he's completely lost that, that prejudice. <laughs> it's a great thing about, about collecting and painting. You can, you can really make your own background and history for stuff. Okay, so I showed you how we go through all of the models doing the reds. And what we're gonna do next is... Oh, okay, yeah, some of your guys might have these straps on their, on their bracers. And if they do, the color you're gonna be painting them to pop off of the gold is Xandri dust. So we kind of have a common theme, if they have cuffs, it's Xandri dust. If they have these straps, it's Xandri dust. Boom and boom. Now we're just gonna, we're gonna go back over the model, double check to see if there's anything else we want to do with it, and we're gonna wrap up. So I'm going to leave the pouches as they are, but what I'm gonna do is take some lead belcher and paint in the buttons. If you want, you can go back over with more Fang Brown. Because we're doing this for speed, I am not gonna do any other, anything else to these little brown pouches here. With your lead belcher, you're also gonna go back over and re-highlight any of the silver parts that got a little bit too dark in the wash section. All right, and that is it for each guy. So, so the reds in this section are gonna be what's the, what's the, what's the most, um, I guess, involved going back over. And that's not even too much, which is nice. Remember, Seraphim Sepia for any of the uh, holsters for the for the knives. <laughs> Give it that aged ivory look. Okay, I'm also going to show you right now. So we're doing our last look over, yeah, of everybody. I'm going to show you how I write with my Micron Arts pen how I write the script. So let's get in there as close as we can. Instead of writing just like squiggly lines, what I've started doing and I found it much more effective is to write little notches next to each other. So 
So you also do them at a diagonal. They look more like script. So let me show you right here on my table. This is how, oh, so dirty. This is how I would do it. If this is the purity seal, right? Then I'll do like diagonal notches like that rather rather than the other example would be to do just one squiggly line all the way across so either of them look okay but this one looks a little bit more like actual writing on the left so that's kind of how i do all my purity seals <clears throat> back to painting so we did our reds Looking at the silver. Um, one more thing you can do, which I don't think will take too much time, is mix a little bit of Rackard Flesh and Dumbo Brown together. And what this is going to do is give you a creamy Dumbo Brown color that's a very good highlight for the binding on all of the knives. So if you've got a bayonet or a knife in the holster on one of your guys, this makes an excellent color for it. So let's check out our bayonet here. I have just a, like 50% 50 per, 50 or one part Dumbo Brown to one part Rackard Flesh. One to one, as we say in the biz. There. And this guy is done. Man, the wood grain really, really does it. The wood grain really makes it pop. Grenade launcher guy looking really awesome. Some of these guys, I... Yeah, it's it's really easy to forget about their their buttons on their pouches. Like I just forgot about this button because I'm just so ready to to finish this unit. So you always want to make sure you paint paint the little buttons. The demon is in the details. Golden demon that is. Yeah, that wood grain looks awesome after after an Agrax Earthshade wash. If you want, what you can do is take a little bit of Zandri dust and re-highlight the cuffs. And just even the edges. Leaving some of that sepia wash in the shadow and gives it that little bit of pop. Who knew I would love, I, I really was afraid when August Painting Challenge started, I really was afraid that I would hate painting these guys. Ugh. And I love them now, they're great. I'm just not missing anything. So this is, we're doing like tabletop quality here, tabletop standard, yeah? And if you wanted to do, if you wanted to do say, like a higher standard than this, I would suggest actually going back over all the colors, not just the red, but to go over the gold, to redo the gold maybe with um, 
with itself, Rune Lord Brass, and then possibly even doing a fine highlight of Rune Fang Steel on the edges so that you get like that reflective look. I'm just gonna do all the bayonets now while I've got it on my brush. It's actually good to do this highlight because I'm noticing that on a lot of my bayonets I got the Rune Lord Brass from the, um, when I was painting the hilt, got it onto the binding. So it's actually good. Kind of clean up that problem. Nice, easy. Easy strokes. And your guy is just about done. Once you put all the silver bits onto the brass, once you write out their purity seals, you don't want to forget the purity seals. Uh, the these these silver buttons is not as important. They could just be little little studs. Also, this is one that would be easy to get your silver paint if you don't have a good tip on your brush. It would be really easy to get the silver paint onto the onto the pouch itself, and then you're gonna have to go back and paint over. But this is this is worth talking if you really want to be a completionist like me. Okay. Now we didn't talk about this guy's feather yet. This one model has this feather, and uh, depending on what color, I kind of say just paint it whatever color you want. You might want to use it as a as an identifier for your models, maybe for different squads. They would have different colored feathers, like a green feather, or a red feather, or a blue feather. I like to just do white feather, so we do celestial gray. I'm trying to come up with this, I mean, there, there's no, there's nothing in the books, like in the Imperial Guard, there's no awards and commendations list for what means what, so it's really up to you to decide what everything means. So f for me, what I like to think of is that the, the white feather represents either a Vostroyan who lost someone that was related by blood recently and it's like their way of mourning them uh, which is pretty grim and pretty dark like to think about if they it, just like I mentioned earlier if if they are related to somebody in their unit and they were killed in a previous engagement that that's kind of how they they honor them but but that's one way of looking at it another way i was thinking about it is that the white feather signifies something that is awarded to them for meritorious service that they do for example say they saved a fellow guardsman's life somehow, then they would get the white feather. Or say they, they sacrificed something to get it. The, the reason why that doesn't work as, as well is because usually if you sacrifice something enough, then that's important enough for you to get commendation, usually it's posthumous, which means usually they do it after you're dead. In the Imperial Guard, the best way to get awards and Medals is to die doing something awesome. So thanks for painting with me. I know a lot of you out there actually don't paint the stuff that I paint, and you just put my videos on while you're while you're working. And I think that's awesome. <laughs> I think that's great. 
everybody has to work on stuff, right? Everybody's got modeling things to do. And I'm just glad that you let me hang out with you guys. For those of you that do paint Vostroyans and are seriously using this as a guide, thank you as well. All three of you, you know who you are. So I'm going to I'm going to get on and I'm going to paint all the rest of this these little bits. It's a tutorial and that means that usually I I am with you the whole way. But at this point really it's it's just repeating myself, painting the little buttons, doing the purity seals, washing anything that we missed, stuff like that. So, uh-oh. Starting to notice a little bit of a shine. If you are seeing some of the paint coming off, like you can see some silver shine on this guy's helmet or hat, poofy hat, then I would just go back over with the with the darkest shade, dry it bark. And this is a good tip for anything. If you see your paint brushing off, I would go back with the darkest shade, the first shade, and I would paint in the shiny bits. And then I would look and see, is it is it obvious, conspicuous, can you see it? If you can, then go back over with the next highlight, which would be Zandri Dust. And by then, it should disappear. The offending color should disappear because the reason why we don't start with the highlight first is because it might be too bright. Are you serious? You won't expect me to get in there? This might be one of the sections with this purity seal, this gas mask guy, when you use a brush instead of a Micron Arts pen. The reason why I like using a Micron Arts pen though is because it is so fine and thin and there's no worry about paint control on your brush. If you're trying to paint a purity seal by brush using your finest tipped brush, yeah, it might be hard to, especially when you get in these more constricted angles it might be harder to get the paint on at the right angle and control the paint flow as smoothly as you'd like. Actually, I think I might be done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to base my guys and uh, I have some ideas for snow basing that I might that I might do, but overall they're just about done. So we're going to come back to this at the very end and we will wrap up. If, if you're gray, celestial gray feather dries and you want to give it a little bit of a pop, the next highlight up would be both one gray. So this is the last thing that I'm going to do with you before I cut the camera. Our video is getting, getting on a little bit and we need to get on to some more of Australians. So I like the idea that the white feather kind of signifies personal, oh, look at that, I just messed up, personal loss to the trooper. It's his way of mourning. Australians, they don't really care for sacrificing uh, their look. I think for you know practicality, which is why they're wearing these bright red coats in the middle of city urban urban war ter uh, territories and battlefields. They did. You might think twice about having bright white feathers hanging from their hats, but it's kind of like a show of honor, ritualistic scarring, stuff like that. So okay. I'm gonna fit I'm gonna base these guys, I'm gonna finish doing the little buttons on all these pouches, and then we will get back to it at the end of the video. So I'm doing the bases, I'm about to wrap up this video, and I realize we haven't really talked about their the non-gas mask guys. So let me tell you what I would do to highlight up their faces. I would take some Bugman's glow and add just a little bit of Screaming Skull into it. Now, Bugman's Glow was the, if you remember back to part one of the video, Bugman's Glow was the original skin color. And with Raitland Flesh Shade, 
it toned it down just a little bit. So we're really just highlighting it back up and giving it a little bit of a touch of pale cream uh, skin tone kind of colorization. So I'm gonna show you with our young guy here. Let's see if we can get a little bit more light on him. Picking up the high, highest places to highlight, like the nose, the upper lip, the cheek. Try to leave the shading in all the shadows, obviously. That's where the shading would be. And here on this side, he's got a great, this model, the face is sculpted so well. You have really beautiful surface area to play with. He sculpted the, the side of the face, under the eye, the eye lens. It really gives you a nice surface area to play your highlights on. Okay, so that's him done. Oops. Let's move on to some of the Vanyas. Oh, Koganovich! Oh yeah, brother! I like my face. Take your vitamins. Do your homework. Eat your vegetables. Thanks, Hulk Hoganovich. We'll highlight the other Vanyas and then we'll come back and I'll do some some mustache work. the only other two guys here. So, the great thing about these Hulk Hogan or Uncle Vanya models, as I like to call them, and good catch, Blue Cloud, it is a Chekhov reference. For those of you out there who read Chekhov, not many, I would assume. Well, I don't know, there are a lot of actor, performer people who watch these videos, surprising amount. Awesome. So, to highlight the black beard, I would use Eschen Gray. If you have a black beard, which I do, I would try to just stay on the tips, but then maybe do one or two long lines up the middle. And then for for Hulk Hoganovich, I would do Zandri Dust to re-highlight because remember we I think did we shade it at all? We might have shaded if you did shade it with Seraphim Sepia. And this is just to bring the color back up. Oh yeah. And then at the edges, Screaming Skull, just like we did with Eschen Gray. The Screaming Skull is like the the highlight, the accent color. Ooh, that tickles, brother. That's right, Chaos. I'll see you at the Royal Rumble. And that's it. We highlighted the bases. I'm gonna be doing some snow work. Uh, when I get back home, I do have the basing kit from the Warhammer or the Citadel basing kit. I don't really care for the snow. The Warhammer snow, I think, is just a little too powdery. I love Army Painter Battlefield snow, though. If, if any of you remember, I did a video on it a while ago. Love it. So good. So I'm going to get some more of that, use that instead. And uh, I'm going to wrap it up here. So thanks for watching, everybody. The way I base my Bustroyans is I paint black on the rims to simulate a kind of urban war zone, I paint the top with Mechanicus Standard Gray, and then I dry brush over that Administratum Gray. 
excuse me, I got the hiccups. And those create a very nice grayish kind of color scheme. In fact, let me show you a, a model that I kind of, I use the Citadel Snow for this model and I don't really care for it too much, but same thing underneath and then add some snow on top. And what that does with the black base and the white snow, it creates a focal point so that the red uniforms, the silver, the gold, all that stuff really pops out. So that is it.